in the biggest social experiment yet, I put 1,000 Minecraft players in a massive prison. 100 of those players will be selected to be guards. They'll be led by one warden who must maintain order. Will the prisoners be obedient, or will they riot and try to escape? Just like in real life, if a player dies, they are dead forever. What ended up happening was crazy. I present to you, the prison experiment. All right, I think everyone's in. So what are you in for? Jaywalking. Tax fraud. I am um, at a fireman. At the beginning of day one, the prisoners were directed to the center courtyard to meet the guards and the warden, a player named Jaw Unleashed. Welcome, prisoners! I am your warden, Jaw Unleashed. Obey the guards and you will have a good time here. The prisoners then got a chance to explore their new home, which consists of four large building plots, a massive cafeteria, an infirmary, an underground gym, and then a few secret locations which might or might not help them escape. We'll see if the prisoners find them. Hello, Mr. Wood Daddy. Why are you in prison? I, uh, ran an illegal cat breeding ring. I see. During our conversation, a prisoner dropped a sword next to Wood Daddy. Now, in this prison, swords, as well as other dangerous items, are considered contraband and therefore illegal. So when the guard saw Wood Daddy holding the sword, he was questioned and placed on the prison watch list. At the very center of the prison is the Warden's Tower, which houses the guard's quarters, the solitary confinement cells, and, at the very top, the Warden's Office. Hello, Warden Ja, what's your plan to run the prison? Well, I believe in bringing out the best in prisoners rather than punishing them. If I'm kind to them, they probably won't want to escape as much. Or, you know, kill me. Coming into the experiments, John Leash's approach was to be the good warden, promoting rehabilitation over punishment. As such, he instructed his guards to be as lenient as possible. This policy, however, did not stop the mass amounts of attacks and, in some cases, murders that occurred on day one. It goes without saying that the guards had plenty to do. Uh, we caught Silvises with contraband, but we confiscated it, and then this Maddie Nut guy just attacked us. There were several more isolated attacks throughout the day, most of them prisoner on prisoner, but what was super abundant was the massive amount of contraband trading, like this player who was selling illegal weapons in the bathroom. I have sold... Uh, I've sold 10 wooden swords to 10 schmucks, and I, I've currently, uh, my, my business is prospering in the bathroom. The warden then announced that it was lunchtime at the cafeteria. At first, things were rather orderly with people making a line to receive their food. However, as more people started to arrive and prisoners grew impatient, things got a little unruly. Ah! Ja, you might have an issue here. One prisoner actually got killed in this breakout, and the warden John Leash told prisoners to leave the cafeteria. This, however, caused prisoners to be more angry since many had not yet received their food. After people threatened to riot, the warden quickly retreated to his tower with his elite bodyguards, having learned a very important lesson. Don't call everyone to the cafeteria at once. Before everyone could be dispersed, I spoke with the leader of a prison gang that had been formed in the cafeteria. Hello, Heladulo, what's the name of your gang? Um, El Bozo Mafia. <laughs> Nice. According to the leader, Alanulo, the Elbozo Mafia had already recruited over a hundred members, all of whom promised to protect each other against other gangs and also against guards who wronged them. Anyone who gets in our way disappears. There were also peaceful groups like these guys who built a church in one of the build plots, and also this group named the Invisible Hand, whose mission was to preach the values of capitalism to any prisoner who would listen. Capitalism guides the selfish into selflessness. As prisoners began to form groups and make friends, the guards also began to organize. Under the warden John Leashed was a second in command, a player named Soleth, who designed the guard hierarchy. The highest guard tier was the elite team, responsible for protecting the warden. Second was the standard prison guard tier, which secured the entire prison. Lastly, the lowest tier, responsible for patrolling outside the prison, was the perimeter team. Yeah, we're very lonely out here, but I kind of like it. Before long, it was the end of the day. However, something a little unexpected happened, which got some people worried. Instead of letting prisoners go to their cells for the night, the warden first called them to the center courtyard. Hello, prisoners. I have just received word that one of our guards has been killed. As of right now, we do not know exactly what happened, 
but our Deputy Warden Solov believes that a group of prisoners is responsible. Tonight, know that we may search your cell or bring you into the Warden's Tower for further questioning. Thank you. From that moment on, the spirit of the prison changed. Guards became more paranoid of prisoners and prisoners more paranoid of guards. The guard who was killed was named Ella and it happened near the end of day one in the cafeteria. It was done by one lone prisoner who was swiftly executed. The guards on scene reported exactly what happened to the second in command, Solev, but Solev told the warden jaw that this wasn't a lone attack, but rather an organized attack involving a group of prisoners. I think warden jaw on these a good guy, but being good is also his greatest flaw. If he doesn't think that there's an imminent threat coming from the prisoners, then he won't let us use force against them. We can't keep reacting to attacks, we need to start preventing them and preventing them includes using enhanced interrogation methods. And so, throughout the night, the guards were permitted to randomly question prisoners and bring suspects into the Warden's Tower. This prisoner named Sidefall secretly gave a guard information about a riot planned for day two. I'm giving him info. Uh, <laughs> You're a snitch? <laughs> yeah, I'm a snitch, actually. <laughs> Eventually, some of the other prisoners got suspicious. Trust me, Seidfall is just willing to give up information. He can't be trusted. This poor prisoner, meanwhile, got locked in a cell with a suspected murderer. I'm gonna be honest, uh, Ish, uh, some guard shut the door on me here. <laughs> and you're stuck with the maniac. Well... Good luck tonight. Aside from a few lapses, the guards had successfully kept the prison under control during the first day. Let's see what happens next. The prisoners are out of their cells. Good morning, nurses. I hear there's a lot of people coming here. There's a lot of people wanting cookies from me. Maybe I shouldn't have handed out cookies. The prisoners apparently slept very well because they were weirdly hyper at the beginning of day two. Some of them started swarming the prison receptionist. Working at the front desk quickly became known as the worst job. Get away from me, you lemmings. I hate you. I hate all of you. To stop the chaos, the warden called the prisoners to the center courtyard. He brought out a prisoner named Boy Jedi who was accused of starting a riot on day one. Instead Instead of punishing this prisoner, we will work to rehabilitate him. The guards, meanwhile, were bracing for the prisoners to potentially riot and demand that Boy Jedi be released immediately. What they didn't expect was for most prisoners to chant for his death. Warden John Leashed took Boy Jedi to the nurses' quarters for rehabilitation and then declared he would spend the whole day on the ground talking with prisoners. After hearing this, Solev knew that John Leashed wouldn't be at the Warden's Tower. Second in command, Solev has been standing next to the solitary cell of, I think this is a member of El Pozo Mafia. Where's he taking him? Is he releasing him from solitaire? <laughs> Poor Sayasabar. What the heck is? It turns out that the rumored torture in the prison is real. This massive underground complex was so secretive that most guards didn't even know it exists. Solov knew that John Leach's policies would lead to disaster, so he secretly took matters into his own hands. He brought two members of the El Bozo Mafia from Solitary into the underground complex's arena, and then in a cruel twist, forced them to fight to the death. Meanwhile in the prison, oh wow, look at this, floating pirate ship. Above ground, on the four quadrants, many prisoners were just having a good time building with each other. It looks like the church is finally complete. 
They're holding the ceremony. These guys made what they called Canada Land with a moose and igloo. At one point, they even got the ward and John Leash to play hockey with them. Guys, your puck is uh, <laughs> glued to the ground. John Leash also went to the prison's gym to get to know the prisoners and to play basketball. Meanwhile, in the gym was Wood Daddy, who was still angry about being framed. He was in a bit of a revolutionary mood. Spending 24-7 hitting the bags. I'm gonna bust Boy Jedi out. <laughs> what? You're gonna go save Boy Jedi? Yeah, save boy Jedi. Man did nothing wrong. Of course, I had to also check in on the cafeteria staff, see how they were doing after the previous day's chaos. So it's not as bad as it was uh, yesterday. It's been yes. pretty orderly and people are just... Whoa! <laughs> Yeah, about that. I then caught this prisoner storming hell, telling the other prisoners not to snitch. What's going on here? Why you called them snitches? <laughs> <laughs> Just reminding them, man, rules of the prison. Storming hell, a representative of the El Bozo Mafia, was speaking with all of these prisoners who were a part of the prison's second largest gang called El Cheese Market. <laughs> These freaking names. Then, all of a sudden, during our interview... I don't know if they want yeah. prisoners, you know, grouping up, forming some sort of revolution. Oh. Oh! Oh, oh my god! Oh, 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 I'm getting the hell out of here! I'm what getting the heck? <laughs> they all just had a story. <laughs> I see him there. Okay, oh I'm my god, up. they got him! They got another guard. They, oh, he's dead! <laughs> Second guard down! The El Cheese Market Gang ran throughout the prison as a pack searching for guards to kill. I didn't do anything, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you went from don't snitch to guys, I'm innocent, please. <laughs> the gang then headed right for the cafeteria. Oh boy, they're in the cafeteria. Yeah, they're slowing down. There's a lot more guards in the cafeteria, which probably makes them more hesitant to attack. Wait, wait. Yeah, they're heading down the hallway. There's a guard. There's a guard. They're attacking him. Oh my god, he goes. They continue to wreak havoc around the cafeteria until... Solov and the elite team were deployed to disperse the riot. <laughs> Here they go. The violent perpetrators were killed and the riot was dispersed, but not before taking the lives of six guards. For the rest of the day, guards were getting tipped off that several more large riots may occur, and all the prison staff were getting scared for their lives. Warden John Leash needed to get this prison under control now and convince not only the prisoners, but also his guards that his strategy of rehabilitation over punishment, kindness over compulsion, was actually working. As such, he called everyone to the censor courtyard and brought out the prisoner Boy Jedi who had just finished the prison's new rehabilitation program, which consisted of being forced to speak with a therapist and only being released once you promised to never commit a crime again. Yes, rehabilitation is good. I know what I did wrong and I will never do it again. I love this prison. Warden John Leash then stepped up to the podium to give what needed to be the most important speech of his career. Thank you, Boy Jedi. Today, we saw violence like never before, which has caused some to question my methodology, my belief that we should help rather than punish. This prisoner here is a prime example that rehabilitation does work. After getting to know many of you, I can tell you that while it may be hard to see, there is good in this prison. From the care given at the nurses' quarters to the friendships formed in the cafeteria, from the building competitions to the hockey games, from guards to prisoners, there is hope! All prisoners report to your cells immediately. If you are found outside your cell during the night, you will be killed. Do not test us. I repeat, all prisoners to your cells immediately. A new day had come, and the warden was dead. It is unclear what had provoked Boy Jedi to kill the Warden, but to the new administration, one thing was clear. Rehabilitation had failed, and it was time for a more strict approach. After paying tribute to the old Warden, Solev was sworn in as the new Warden and expressed his main priority to maintain order. 
At the beginning of day three, many prisoners were rounded up and brought into the warden's tower to be questioned, including the Elbozo Mafia member storming hell. <laughs> what? Give me names or nobody will hear you scream. What's going on? Are you giving names or not? I, I don't know, man. Snitches get snitches. Is God testing me right now? Is God testing my faith? <laughs> Even though the previous day's riot was caused by the El Cheese Market Gang, the guards believed that the El Bozo Gang was responsible because Storming Hell appeared to be leading the initial charge, even though he had no idea what was going on. The leader of El Bozo was not happy. The El Bozo Mafia is being falsely accused. We demand justice. In the new administration's effort to stop gang activity, all four building plots were completely wiped and replaced with four giant cubes that the guards expected prisoners to mine out. Also, Solif hired several new guards with upgraded gear to search potential gang members. One of these new guards was Nolan from the Mr. Beast cast, who has already spent his fair share of time in prison. Mr. Wood Daddy, I yes. think it's time for a cell check. I've heard you've been naughty. I don't know where you're hearing this from. We have to do a cavity search. <laughs> oh no, oh no. Bend over, Wood Daddy. We have to do this cavity it's search. It's just trunk. <laughs> All right, I need you to cough for me. Oh, a sword popped out. He's got a- he's got a weapon! Wood Daddy just could not catch a break. Afterward, when he went to the nurse's quarters for help, he found out that the new soul of administration had replaced talk therapy with an extreme version of electroshock therapy, which I felt compelled to help out with. One. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, my devious efforts had an unintended consequence. Did I just kill the nurse's cat? Oh no. <laughs> oh no, I did. This, however, wasn't even the most interesting thing that happened at the nurse's quarters. In fact, not even close. Toward the end of day three, there was some commotion outside. Uh, there's a lot of members of El Bozo. Uh, I think I know what's gonna happen here. <laughs> oh boy. Yep, he's defecting. Oh boy. Our first prison escape, here we go, yeah! I don't think anybody noticed, did they actually get away? There was a secret alliance between Ender the Perimeter Guard and the two prison nurses. Their goal was to free members of the El Bozo Mafia who they believed were being wrongly framed by the new soul of administration. This mission was a great risk to all of them since any prison staff caught defecting would be executed. Meanwhile, these six prisoners realized for the first time that the prison was located on a massive jungle island. The trees provided great cover for their getaway, and they officially became the first to successfully escape the prison. It would soon be time to wrap up day three, but first, they turned the cube of snow into a bunch of <laughs> Wait, they made Canada again? No way. Despite the plots having all been cleared out, many players got together to rebuild their gathering places. These guys turned the desert cube into a sandcastle, which didn't quite fit the labor camp theme that Solev was going for. Meanwhile, back in the Warden's Tower, the new administration had officially opened up the secret underground chamber with the torture for all guards to use. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Alanilo, the leader of El Bozo versus one more second leader of a gang called the Freedom Fighters. Little did Solov know, at this very instant, two defecting guards were approaching his office. Ender and Legacy had sneaked into the Warden's office and discovered the prison experiment's largest secret, what I called the funding variable. At the beginning of each day, the Warden is given a list of people who are funding the prison. The Warden must meet with these funders, which I select, and make sure they are satisfied with the prison's performance. The less funding the prison has, the more things tend to go wrong, like the cafeteria running out of food, the torture machines malfunctioning, or like tomorrow... The reason things were breaking so fast on days three and four was because confidence in the prison dropped hard after the old warden died and all the funders left except for one. On top of this, if funding ever reaches zero, then all server-side protections of the prison are revoked and prisoners will be able to place or break blocks anywhere within the prison. In other words, it would be chaos. 
So without further ado, let's see how this experiment ends. The next morning was surprisingly calm. Perhaps prisoners were still tired after guards decided to host a talent show very late into day three. Wow. In the morning, when Solef called everyone to the center, the prisoners realized that the four plots had four new cubes similar to day three. The only difference was the ground, which now seemed to match the material of each cube. All right, listen up. The cafeteria is low on food and the nurses are low on supplies, so we need to ration what we have. The prisoners could sense that things were going downhill in the prison. Such sentiments was especially visible in the headlines of a prison newspaper run by a player named Natalie. Furthermore, when a monument of the old warden was built in the center courtyard, many prisoners started to worship it, nostalgic for better times. Uh, this is sad. <laughs> but not everyone was having a bad time. Guards versus inmates. Three, two, one, go! Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Team prisoner with the ball. The ninja roll shoots. Score! <laughs> he gets it. 2-0. Team Guard now shooting their shot. Score! Here we go, 2-2. Two, two. <laughs> for the past few days, the gym had been a meeting spot for this group. Right next to it was the contraband storage room, which is where guards dropped off any contraband they recovered from prisoners. Needless to say, there was a lot. Holy crap. <laughs> but the contraband issue was nothing compared to the largest problem that faced the Solev administration. This problem was caused by the last remaining funder, who was listed as M.G., Apparently, this funder who now effectively controlled the prison was demanding something from Solev, something that Solev appeared to be hesitant about. What could this demand be? Well, for now, nobody but Solev knows, but if he doesn't oblige, he risks the possibility that the funder pulls out, that all server-side block protections are removed, and therefore the jaw of chaos is unleashed. Day 4 was also a critical moment for the most populous gangs. During the previous night, the the leader of El Bozo Olanulo was killed in the prison's underground arena, and in general, executions of gang members had increased at an alarming rate, and not just of El Bozo members, but all other gangs too. As such, Ender, the defecting guard, felt a renewed urgency to continue aiding in the escape of prisoners. Last night, Ender had led a group of gang members out through a secret tunnel on the side of the prison. What he didn't see was... Rexman04, a guard loyal to Solov, was walking down the hallway and saw Ender do this. He reported this immediately to the administration. This brings us to day four, when Ender was planning another mass escape, this time through the cafeteria's back door. Little did Ender know, Solov and his elite team were hiding in the back, waiting. Are they? Oh, they're going for it. Ah, the ambush! They are getting destroyed, <laughs> oh my god. Nearly all the prisoners in the attempted escape were killed, and Ender was put on death row to be executed tonight. Fearing that more escapes and riots were coming, Solev initiated the prison's lockdown protocol and forced all prisoners into their cells. But because funding was low, some of the cell doors were starting to rust away or malfunction, effectively making them useless. Things did eventually get under control, and once the prison was declared secure, all prisoners were called to the center courtyard, which is when I decided that, due to lack of funding, the front gate should suddenly open. <laughs> He's not gonna see this one coming, but that's what makes it fun, right? <laughs> yeah, by the way, Solavira, front gate has malfunctioned and it's uh, wide open. What? Oh boy, they're running! <laughs> <laughs> they come! Oh my gosh! Guards are now shooting! It's actually working! They are defending this so well! 
<laughs> that is crazy. While the guards successfully stopped the prisoners from escaping, there were currently about 20 prisoners who had already escaped, and these now fugitives were all planning to meet up in this undisclosed location in the jungle and maybe go back to the prison to break more people out. I spoke with the builder. I gotta leave a sign. Oh, your um, political <laughs> messaging, of course. <laughs> yeah, in case I die, they gotta know why I'm out here. The escapees also had to be careful not to get caught since the perimeter team was sending out guards into the jungle, some of whom set up fake refugee houses to trap those who escape. It's worth mentioning that members of El Bozo weren't the only ones to escape. Throughout the days, there were several isolated attempts to get on top of the prison walls and escape, whether by building up or by going up the warden's tower. Most of these attempts ended with the prisoner getting killed, but some did actually get away. Speaking of building up, these prisoners decided to stage a protest to Solov's policies by making a tower in the sand plot and refusing to come down. We are doing a peaceful protest. We're not leaving this no matter what. And indeed, they stayed there during the entirety of day four, even during the lockdown. But soon enough, the end of the day had come, and their will was about to be tested. By this time, all prisoners were supposed to be in their cells, and guards were to complete their end-of-day obligations like restocking the cafeteria or executing death row inmates. For these protesters, the reality that there would be consequences for their defiance was starting to set in. Meanwhile, these two defecting guards were on a mission to sneak into the prison's armory and take as much gear as possible to deliver to the escapees in the jungle. Get down or we will fire! We will not get down until you listen to our demands. When all was settled, Solev returned to his office, only to realize the clock had run out. The funder of the prison said he would arrive at the prison tomorrow morning expecting his biggest request be fulfilled. The funder demanded that Warden Solev set up a game in which all prisoners are divided into four quadrants, each its own team, and then in an ultimate cruel twist, prisoners are forced to fight to the death until only one team remains. If the funder is entered entertained as a spectator, only then will he continue to fund the prison. Solev knew the prison's doom was inevitable. During the night, he summoned his elite team and held one last meeting. No, he's not changing his mind, which means we have no choice but to do this. I wanted to be a good warden, but I failed. I'm sorry. Tomorrow, you will bring the funder to my office. Make sure you treat him well and give him whatever he asks for. Then... When the prisoners woke up the next morning, they realized that all four plots had been completely transformed to appear like natural biomes. There was plains, desert, snow, and jungle. 
The prisoners were told to enter one of the four biomes and then put on a colored helmet that indicates what team they are on. These guys are building a fort. I think they know what's about to happen. Shortly, Solev sent his elite team to the dock to greet and escort the Thunder into the prison. Unacceptable, he says. <laughs> the Thunder was quickly led to the Warden's office where Solev profusely apologized for the attack. A few minutes later, Solev announced the game. Prisoners, you've been separated into four biomes. When the cannon shoots, you will fight until only one biome remains. The chat is going ballistic, they don't know what to do. The battle had begun, but nothing was really happening. None of the prisoners seemed to want to attack. Because there was no fighting, the thunder was starting to get impatient, so Solif ordered that guards shoot at any prisoner standing still. Some guards listened, but others... Rehabilitation over punishment. Wait, these guards are standing with the prisoners. Are all of these guards defecting? Then, Teams Desert and Jungle, Albozo and Elchi's Market started to approach each other. This is a revolution! Oh my god, prisoners are killing the guards! The elite team is coming down to stop this! <laughs> the rioters are getting destroyed! Look at their armor! 